can draw pretty much a direct analogy or comparison to the craft beer business. And if you look at the curves in terms of the, how the market share is moving and, and the things that are happening, mm -hmm. we're about 27 years removed from craft beer. So when I put a business plan together, started in 92 for a, a brew pub, um, I, I, if memory serves me right, I think craft beer had about 1.7% by volume of the total beer business in the U.S. So here we are, and it's, I believe, 20 or a little more than 20% now in a very, very, very large industry. And so the pie obviously can only grow as pretty much as fast as the population. Right. Uh, so the market share has to come from somewhere, and in the beer business, it came from the big brewers. And I think the same is going to the same see itself seems happen. to be happening. Yeah, it's going to happen. Yeah, and it is happening. That's where the share has to come from. Yeah. You know, you're, you're, the the ability to create the market in in such an old industry that's been around for so long, it's it's just pretty much not going to happen. Right. But I think one of the things you are doing is by creating a product that people have really not had exposure to. Yeah. You're introducing them to something that they would say, "Wow." This isn't what I would normally drink or consume, but now I, now I do. Absolutely. Um, so you're yeah. even growing the segment of the market that wasn't there before, right. and I think that's what you're helping. Yeah, there, there's no doubt. I mean, that, and, and at the end of the day, that's that's the objective, right? And it, so how do you do that? And that's really a very difficult question to to answer. Well, you just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you try, you do things within the resources and constraints that you have, hoping that you're gaining share one drink at a time. You know, and, and so so for and, and, you know, if you had to kind of draw, if you had to kind of look at the market in terms of broad segmentation, uh, I think it's as simple as saying younger people like differentiation, older people like standardization. It, it, you know, you can't you can't paint you everybody can't with the same every, broad brush, gonna, yep. but generally yep. because we've moved from standardization in the World War Two era people down through the boomers, down through the X's and the Y's, and I don't know what came here, and then the millennials. <laughs> right. And there's a significant difference in almost every category that you can imagine, right. especially food categories, which I'm, I'm including spirits in that as well. So the proliferation of brands, coffees, teas, beer, spirit, I mean, you name it. You go to the rest, you go to a supermarket, I'm 55 years old, you go to a supermarket today, it's nothing like the supermarket when I was a kid. No. Vastly, vastly, vastly different. And it's catering to people's different right. needs People and their lifestyles places. and their times. So rye whiskey was the first spirit you produced. What came after that? Yeah, so so we, we answered the why whiskey. It was really, really a selfish, you know, I like rye whiskey. So let's go. make some rye yeah. whiskey. If you're gonna uh, if you're gonna set this up, <laughs> yeah. you might as well play right. with it the way you want to play right. with it, right? Yeah. And 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 then and then there's a story behind Pennsylvania because we, we do we do we feel very attached to that story because we are after all Pennsylvania distilling company. I was gonna ask you, how did you come up with the name? Then we'll go back to the next mm. spirit. But yeah, the name well the just like everything that I do, it's there has to be a process. Right. And it's just usually a pretty significant undertaking. So we had at that time there were three of us. And I said, guys, throw your list together. We'll get together, and then we're going to vet it. Okay. And I had already had the vetting process lined out. You know, here's the criteria we're going to use qualitatively, quantitatively, et cetera. This is first group, second group, third group, fourth group. Fourth group, we got the name. Okay. Then we go for the trademark, or we go through the – make sure that the name is, is legal to use. So we went through that process, and, you know, it, it gyrated. But ultimately, we came out with mine, Pennsylvania Distilling Company, uh, it was just so simple okay. and it's just, it's, you know, I, if you look at my business plan and you look at my market strategy, which is what we're trying to do now, um, you know, we're trying to build our brand locally in Pennsylvania and then move outwards from there, but in kind of different ways. And I just thought that, you know, it's really kind of the, a perfect fit for the name of the, the company that we want to produce good quality, small batch craft spirits. And we were surprised uh, when we found out that the name was not taken. I have yeah. to tell you, I was surprised too. Yeah. I mean, it was one of those things. Wow. Yeah. All, the, think, all right? the distilleries, nobody has come nobody. up with Pennsylvania distilling. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's an old established name and people think we've been around for a long time. I, so it kind of made a lot of sense to go ahead with that. That's, that's a great idea. Now, I'm not going to ask you what the other ideas are because we don't want to give anybody else any ideas for no, their distillery. We'll save them for later. Right. 
So going back to, you've got your rye whiskey. Yeah. You're really happy with that. Yeah. So what came after that? Uh, after that was vodka. Okay. Uh, I, I, when I put my production schedule together, I do campaigns of four. And that's because I have four fermenters. And in the, in the, in the, in the entire process of production, the, the critical path, if you will, the, 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 the bottleneck is fermentation. You, know, you have to give the yeast time to do their job. And you can't rush that. So, uh, therefore, uh, you know, being the engineer that I am, uh, it just makes sense from an efficiency standpoint, a workflow standpoint, to campaign four batches at a time. And that's what I do. So I'll make four rye whiskeys, you know, four bourbons, four, you know, I'll, I'll just kind of set my schedule up. I'm looking at what's coming, what's selling. So I'm looking at our, our demand uh, signals but uh, to adjust the production schedule. But I pretty much have it set going out several months. So back then, I made rye, then I made vodka. And uh, I, if I had my druthers, I would have continued to make rye uh, for, for at least a few cycles. But I really was in that point, at that point, testing the equipment. And the process to make rye is different in some, in some regards to the, from the process to make vodka. Right. So I wanted to make sure that the two kind of staples, if you will, I could proof them and make them, no pun intended, but proof them and make them on this equipment. And right. I was able to do that. So I made vodka. Plus, you know, vodka, I mean, we have a tasting room here, right? And the tasting room has always been a marketing extension of our company. Uh, and um, when people come in for a cocktail, if you don't have vodka, you got a problem. It's, it's an essential <laughs> mixer right? to start out with. Yeah, right. you have to have it. Yeah. So we made, so we made, we made vodka. We decided at some point during the creation of the business plan, we had decided, and I remember, interestingly enough, having some interesting conversations about this with the guys, where we're going to be a brand house or a house of brands. Okay. And we went back so explain and forth. That. How, does that, how does that factor well, in? Well, it's best explained by examples. Okay. So, so a house of brands is uh, a company that is continuously creating new brands and as a consumer you may not even associate one brand to the next okay you might go and see these different brands and you might even think they're different companies whether or not that cares you care about that okay is you know is really up to the individual but the, the key for those kinds of companies is they're kind of building a brand it's almost a business within a business right you know, look at Procter and Gamble. Look at look at some of the big multinationals that do this just as a matter of their normal business model. I felt because we were so small and because we don't have those anywhere near those resources, because marketing is significantly difficult right. and can be significantly expensive. Uh, I felt that we we can't be a house of brands. We have to be a brand house, and our brand is Pennsylvania Distilling Company. Now you may notice when you look at our bottles, Rich, that we you know one's called Frontier, one's called Old City, one's called First City. Yeah, they're the different uh, spirit types. But when you look at the bottle and you look at the label, you know it's all Pennsylvania Distilling Company. Right. So so you as the distiller are the parent, and your bottles and your different you know whether it's vodka or gin or whiskey, those are your children. So basically, that's how you're doing it. You're, you're the parent. Right. These are your kids. And you're going to raise them and treat them a little bit differently. But you love them all the same. And yeah. you hope that people appreciate each one individually. That's right. Right? So, yeah. and, and I think when you look at the craft distilling industry as a whole, I mean, that's, like you said, it's, it's, it's a financial ability to what you can do. Yeah. But it's also time. You've got four cycles, as you pointed out. Yeah. You can only do so much at one time. Right. And... As Joe, you're going out and you're meeting with the bars and restaurants and doing it. and you're distributing that now. So, what's the experience like for you there to do that now that you have your your children with more on the way? Because I hear you're expecting more kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, um, I, I was first. You talked about education a while ago. I was kind of uh, surprised to find out that there is obviously some people out there that doesn't know how whiskey gets brown. So uh, I had to take the time to explain that to them. There's also some people that don't realize to have gin, you have to make vodka first. Uh, but for the most part... Yeah, you need a neutral spirit. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I was surprised to find out that there is a fair amount of people that don't understand that and don't know it. Uh, but at the same time, when I mentioned the name Pennsylvania Distilling Company, they kind of, I think, uh, I have an easier time getting into different places. 
uh, that actually think that we've been around for a long time and they should talk to me. But um, I'm having a fair amount of success uh, out there right now, and we're in several areas around town right now. We're in the main line. Uh, we're up in King of Prussia. We're in Concha Hocken. We're up in Kennett Square. So, I mean, it's a slow process. Rome wasn't built in the day, but you know what? This isn't a uh, quarter mile, it's a marathon. So we're here for the long haul and uh, we're getting there. One of the things about distilling is patience. Mm -hmm. It's patience to make what you put in the bottle. It's If you decide to put it in a barrel, you have to have patience. Right. And as That's you right. grow your brand, like, people who become to know, like, and trust you. Like That's Rich that said, there's attention to detail and what we're doing and that's what we're all about and we're not about you know people come in here they love the cocktails but they have to be part of the show to see benjamin make the cocktail as well and we'll see him make some cocktails so later. eventually i'm sure yeah. you're going to put that in there as well but that, yeah. that's part of the whole process um so so you, you detailed putting things together but there must have been a like the worst distillery moment for you guys right now a, a moment where things didn't go so right is take us through that you know i think a lot of that was was prior to opening okay you know we we haven't hit any any kind of large uh significant red flags since we've we've been in okay. operation you know the biggest thing was and you know i don't want to i don't want to talk you know i don't want to i won't mention names of companies and whatnot but you know sometimes there's things that aren't just aren't in your control right and, Absolutely, and sadly, that's that's what happened to us, and and um, so the delays that we had prior to opening when we were doing uh, the site search, uh, the the procurement of the equipment and other assets, and the build out, uh, they they probably had the the most of the kind of of, of you know painful uh, pieces uh, to the process, but overall. Uh, you know, I've been around the block. I worked in chemicals for five years and oil for big oil for 10 years. And I was a management consultant uh, for 12 years, uh, working mostly with Fortune 50 uh, companies. And uh, and then I was uh, executive for, for a few years. So, you know, what I'm hearing you say is anything that would have gone awry, hmm. somebody else paid you to do that. So you had a good sense of what you needed to do when you started to fire up the Yeah, stand, I mean, I think right? so. You know, yeah. I mean, you, you know, you just learn uh, from from being around uh, problems all the time. Yeah. You know, how to anticipate them, uh, how to manage them when they happen. Um, there's there's really no replacement for experience. You know, just there's just not. So now you've produced the vodka, you've produced gin. Um, I think your next spirit was rum or... No, uh, yeah, so it, was it was, so it was rye whiskey, vodka, gin, then rum. Then rum. Yeah, and, and with the rum, rum is 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 kind of fun to make because it's really simple and easy. It's a pain because I'm doing all the work back there, and it's lifting heavy buckets of molasses and all this kind of stuff just over and over again, which would have been nice when I was in my 20s, but <laughs> now I'm in my mid-50s. But nevertheless, but it's interesting because with rum, you can almost skip steps. You know, you're not starting from a grain. You're starting from molasses. And we only buy the best molasses. It's grade A uh, select molasses. And um, that made our silver rum, which we call our white rum. And uh, I, I will be making a gold rum, uh, which will be aged uh, probably in about a month. Okay. And with that, I'll tweak, I've already tweaked the recipe. I, I develop all my own recipes. And with that one, I'm going to tweak. I've already tweaked the recipe to to introduce different kinds of molasses into the recipe to give it a more interesting flavor prof profile. So, what's the aha moment for you when the first or whatever that product was that came off the still, and you yeah. said, "We got something here. We've got something that the, the people are going to love." Yeah. You know, not just for you, but it was just that. Wow. wow. This is. I can't wait for people to try what we're making. Well.